This is a drawer. Hi, this is Richard. You're watching Cabinet Wise. Thanks for joining me. And today, we're gonna build a drawer. And before we make the drawer, let's go into what it is we're actually building. Now here is our standard drawer box. We gotta ask ourselves, what is it that we want out of a drawer? Uh, most of the time you have a kitchen or a bathroom vanity and they have these drawers for storage and most of them are made of melamine, which is most likely falling apart. The majority of people have an aging house, which is why I remain so busy in the custom cabinetry business. Here we have what is called a dovetail drawer box. This is a dovetail drawer joint where there are hardwood sides which are 5 eighths all the way around and they're joined with this fancy joinery. Now the question is, is this necessary? Now I asked sort of jokingly, is this drawer box better than a dovetail? I mean, from a woodworker perspective, from a fancy joinery perspective or furniture perspective, no, obviously dovetail joinery is nice. But the question is for most people, if you were going to say reface your kitchen and if you were going to make your own drawer boxes, this right here is a nice drawer. This looks clean. This is not made out of hardwood, it's made out of maple plywood, and it's edge banded. I'm gonna go through each step it takes to build this exact drawer. Finished, it will look like this. Very smooth. So if you look at the comparison, dovetail drawer box, which is higher in cost, this is a drawer box you can make yourself relatively inexpensive with very little experience. The only difference between the two, visually, is right here. Pretty much the same. You could pay thousands of dollars to have dovetail drawer boxes manufactured. You'd always cut these by hand, which is going to take a lot of time. And this is cabinetry. It is not furniture. It is more for function. There is no fancy joinery. In fact, it's almost going to seem too easy too good to be true. Like perhaps it should be a little more complicated, right? I've seen many people build many types of drawers and I don't know that I've seen anyone build a drawer this exact way. And I'm gonna show you the reason why this way works, even though it doesn't seem like it would. Again, there's no fancy joinery whatsoever, but there's certain reasons why this is actually surprisingly strong and we will get into that. This particular drawer is made for Blum Undermount Tandem Slides. Now, if you were to use this slide, you could follow exactly what I'm doing. However, if you were to say, not want to spend the cost of these, this is a premium level slide. You can't order these online. Anyone can get them, but say you wanted to save the cost, you could go down to your local hardware store, Home Depot, you can get a side mount telescoping slide. So I will explain very briefly the difference in the calculations and deductions you would make in putting this drawer together. The main difference is for the undermount slide, you do need to have the drawer sides come down an extra half inch. This is how the slide locks in place. So we will get into that. The front of the drawer is not particularly attractive, but that doesn't matter because once it's clipped in place, when it's in the cabinet, this is what you see. You see the side. As you see, it looks very clean. You see the inside. You see the top. You see the other side. There will be a drawer front attached here. So this is not something you see. And obviously the back you don't see. The drawer comes out to here and that's Now to it. get started, we need to first get our drawer size. We take our tape measure and we measure the opening. So this opening is 21 inches by five and a half inches. The critical dimension is between these two points here and here, because that is where the drawer will rest. So when making our deductions, we'll take the opening width minus one and 11 sixteenths. If it's easier, just go to one and three quarters and then add a 16th. So that would be 21 down to 19 and a quarter plus a 16th. So 19 and five sixteenths. 
So 19 and 5 sixteenths will be the platform size. So first I'll write the depth of the drawer, which is 21 inches in this case, and that is determined by the slide length. Then I'll write the platform width. And for the height, we deduct two inches for your front and back piece. So at five and a half, your front piece will be three and a half inches, which then with the half inch bottom will be four inch total height. For these drawers to work and to be as solid as they are, I always use a half inch bottom. That just adds to the strength and the rigidity. For the sides, you'll add five eighths inch to the total height. So with that being three and a half, and then four will then make this four and five eighths because a half inch below and an eighth inch above. I like to make the sides stick up an eighth inch. I think it just looks nice. We're gonna be using three quarter inch maple plywood for the fronts and the backs and half inch for the sides. Now it's time to edge band the parts. I use maple 7 8 craft back pre-glued edge banding tape. It works great. And then I use 5 8 tape for the sides. What's that you say? You don't have one of those expensive edge banders? No problem. Use any old household iron. Now I'm just cleaning up the edges with a sharp chisel just to get rid of any excess material before sanding. And as I'm just scraping away all that excess, I'd like to point out that uh, I am using unfinished material here. And the reason for that is because, as I said earlier, there is no real joinery involved. Uh, we want this to be simple construction that can be built quickly. Uh, but the trade-off is you cannot use pre-finished material. If you do use pre-finished material, the glue will not adhere properly to that. And this method is very much dependent on the glue. And now I'm just gonna sand the edges of each piece.
Now it's time for the assembly. So what I'll do is I'll use my Senco 18 gauge brad nailer with inch and a half nails. And of course the hero is the tight bond wood glue, the original. So what I'm showing here is the tear out. I'm gonna explain that a little bit later as well, but when you're cutting the platform, you wanna make sure the good side is facing down so that the tear out actually comes out on the good side which here is facing up. I just marked it because these front and back pieces are going to be covering that up. So now I'm just gonna run a row of nails across each side. And these will be on the bottom of the drawer so they will not be seen. And then I'll fasten the sides and the tear out. I'll want to make sure it goes down so where it's covered by the front and the back. Carefully apply my glue. And then when I'm setting it in place, again, we'll wanna make sure we have a half inch overhang on the bottom and an eighth inch on the top. And now one piece remains to be put on. Let's just check all the edges to make sure they all look clean and tidy. And our last bead of glue. Now the last thing to do as we're waiting for the glue to dry is fill the nail holes. I use this wood filler in maple. This particular one is an acetone based. You can use whatever you choose. I just find that this works well because it doesn't crack or shrink. And now all I need to do is screw on the locking devices. They sit tight against the sides while sitting 5 eighths back from the face. I'll use 5 eighths number seven head Phillips screws. Then I just need to drill my hole in the back. It's a quarter inch hole. And it's made specifically for these Blum slides. This little tab sits in that hole in the back. The tandem slides, if they were to say, use the side mount slides, the side mount telescoping slides, which you can pick up at any hardware store. The reason they're called telescoping is because their action comes out similar to a telescope. The same idea overall applies, except instead of adding 5 eighths to the total height here, the, the half inch below and the eighth inch above, you would only add an eighth inch and you would have the end, uh, the bottom end right here. 
So that's the only difference from that end. You just don't need this extra half inch. And then the other difference is when you make your deduction for the plywood, rather than subtracting one and 11 sixteenths from the opening to get your platform size, you would deduct two inches because you would need a half inch on each side for the thickness of the slide, since they sit on the, on the side, a half inch on each side, so that's one inch, and then a half inch for each side of the plywood wall. Although you will wanna check your actual plywood measurement, because some are gonna be shy of a half inch, in which case you wanna add an extra 16th or so to the platform itself. Um, to make up that thickness because really you want the drawer to finish out at one inch less than the opening if you're doing the side mounts. So now we have the wood putty drying in those little nail holes. They are acting as a clamp to hold each piece together as the glue dries. The wood glue really is the ultimate piece in this puzzle. Uh, it is tight bond one wood glue. Uh, once it dries, it is just as hard as the wood itself. It's going to bond this piece. Like I said, it can't be pre-finished, but it's going to bond this piece to this veneer so tightly that it's more likely to rip the veneer off than to actually separate. Uh, also, the reason I do the fronts and the backs in three quarter is so that there's a wider surface for this to be glued to. Uh, same idea with it being a uh, half inch on the bottom. Um, once this is all glued and dry, this does not come apart. 17, 18 years of experience, I've never had one of these drawers come apart. Um, as I said earlier in the beginning of the video, it seems too easy, like you would need some kind of joinery or rabbiting to get this to sit tighter or uh, to get this to be stronger, but I assure you this is plenty strong. I've thrown them on a concrete floor to test out the strength and they don't come apart. This is a entirely new drawer, so now I have two for that one opening. But as you see, it's all very clean looking. That's just some sawdust there. You can't even see the nail holes, and the glue is dry. So as I said before, this is solid. Between the half inch bottom, the three quarter front and back, plenty of surface for the glue to adhere. That glue is very strong. It glues stronger than the wood itself. Like I said, it's more likely that veneer is going to tear off than for that joint to separate. And there you have it. So one tip is when you're cutting your parts, make sure in order to get everything to fit together tightly, when you're cutting the bottom platform, you wanna make sure your front and your back is exactly the same width. I cut them on a table saw. Uh, you could always use a smaller a table saw um, in your garage. Uh, you could also use a track saw. You could use a skill saw. That might be a little more <laughs> tricky to get clean cuts, but the key is clean cuts and all the exact correct size. Uh, that way you're gonna have everything coming together in the corners very tight. Again, um, emphasize, is it's important when you're cutting on the table saw that your tear out side is going to be the side that butts into the other piece. For instance, on your bottoms, you wanna make sure the tear out is up on the good side. So when you're running it through the table saw, you actually wanna put the good side down and the bad side up so that there's no tear out here because that's the bottom of the drawer. It's nice to not have tear out. I didn't bother puttying these because they face down. You don't see those, but you could putty those as well if you wanted. So the tear out is hidden. Any tear out is hidden there under that front and back piece. And the same idea with the sides. The tear out is hidden inside there. You make sure that the outside, I mean, generally you want both to be good sides because they're both seen. Uh, the front and the back really only need one good side and the bottom only needs one good side.
Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this simple drawer build. I hope you try it out and let me know what you think. Uh, also, let me know if you disagree with this method and think uh, perhaps some further joinery uh, is required to make a strong drawer box. As I said, I've made this for 17, 18 years, never had any issues with drawers falling apart. They're a very solid box um, just for simple construction, for um, mass production cabinetry, or for DIYers. Anyway, take care and I will see you next time.